does your child or adolescent have trouble with thinking that they're being bullied or teased inappropriately when they're not? Uh, this video is on something that I call perceived bullying, and that is when a child who has the tendency to take things literally, such as a child with high-functioning autism or Asperger's syndrome or maybe some other kind of special needs, um, thinks that someone is saying something mean or harmful to them when that actually isn't happening. Now I have a second video when I talk about what to do when children are truly being teased or victimized by bullies. So please look at that one if you're interested in that topic. Uh, but today's topic is on what to do in helping a child when they think someone's being mean to them, but that actually isn't the intention. So this is a special problem for kids who have trouble with reading intentions. When they have trouble with understanding someone else's perspective or predicting or imagining what's going on in someone else's thoughts and feelings. Uh, and you will know if this applies to your child, if they almost always take things literally, and if someone makes a sarcastic comment, if they interpret that almost always in a literal manner, then this kind of thing can happen to them a lot because many times children and adults say things that they don't mean. So if we think of what sarcasm is all about, so sarcasm is trying to be funny by saying the opposite of what we mean. And we often think that when someone's really good at being sarcastic, they can say it with a very deadpan expression that doesn't give away those social clues that they are telling a joke. Uh, and so some people pride themselves in being very sarcastic, or sometimes I have parents that come in and they're talking about their interactions with their child, and one parent will say, oh yeah, I'm a big teaser, everybody in the family knows that, I'm always teasing. Or another parent might say, I'm always very sarcastic. That's just who I am. I'm a really sarcastic person and my child should know that about me. Um, but what ends up happening is that the child just doesn't understand that because they're getting these constant messages that they don't understand. You know, where we're saying one thing and meaning another. Now this can often happen too with other kids at school and even with teachers and, you know, professionals. So you'll have a lot of times where um, the meaning of um, what's happening is quite different than the actual words behind um, that are being said. So one way that I try to help explain this to kids is to um, draw them a picture, and I'll show you an example of this, where we show the difference between what someone might be thinking in a thought bubble and what they might be saying in their words. So for instance, one of the things that I try to help kids look at is if something's being said, um, is to ask them if the person that's saying it to them is someone who's normally a friend, someone that they think of as a friend or a friendly acquaintance um, or a loved one you know, in their family versus someone who is someone who normally picks on them and is mean to them and so forth. So if they can identify that that person is normally a friend or as a family member or this parent, for instance, say, who's often teasing or sarcastic, then we know that that person might have a friendly intention. Again, just because someone's a friend or loved one doesn't mean they always have a friendly intention, but a lot of times they do. So for instance, I use this one as an example of, let's say a child was in the classroom and they got a good grade on the test and their friend who was sitting next to them didn't get a good grade. So that friend might be feeling jealous. So that's their thought bubble is, I feel jealous that their really good friend who's sitting next to them got a good grade and they didn't. And then they might say in their words, you jerk, I hate you. Now, they don't mean that they think their friend now is a jerk and that they don't like them anymore and they truly hate them. It's just a funny way that a lot of kids have of expressing, I'm jealous you got a good grade and I didn't. And that's what they mean. They mean, I still like you as a friend. And in fact, I might even admire you because you got such a good grade on this. I'm feeling jealous and I wanna tease you about your grade on your test. So the words that might come out might be, you jerk, I hate you, 
might be said with a slightly different tone than a bully might say it to the child, or it might not, it depends on the delivery style of that person, but the words coming out um, sound very mean and harmful. Um, so it's this perceived teasing or bullying attempt that's occurring, and the child may misinterpret it. They may think that their friend, instead of just feeling jealous and wanting to be silly at that moment, might actually have decided, they might think that this thought bubble should read, I don't like you anymore. All of a sudden I've decided you're not my friend because they've said these very hurtful words. Um, so sometimes it can help to have the child realize that a lot of times what people say is really different from what they think. Uh, and then we have to think, if that's the case, then what do they do in those situations? How do they handle these things which occur countless times during the day? This also occurs with things like figures of speech, where people say things like, oh, I feel like hitting my, you know, head against the wall, or it's like hitting a, you know, brick, you know, hitting against the wall. You know, when you say things like that, and that isn't what you really mean at all, it just means you're frustrated. Or you might say, oh, I'm so mad, I just want to kill him. You know, and you, again, it's not anything, you're not actually threatening to homicide against anyone, you're just a figure of speech that you're feeling angry or frustrated at that time. Uh, and so there's a lot of times when people misinterpret these things. And so what we want to do is teach someone some skills for how to handle that. Now, and one thing to consider in this case is whether the child regularly tells people what their diagnosis is. So for instance, if a child has informed their friends or the other students in the classroom that they have autism or Asperger's, they might say it in one way. And if they haven't, then they might say it in a different way. So I'll try and give a couple of examples. So when you might set it up for them with a visual support like this that they have with them, um, at school uh, and basically all this says is what to do when there's joking or sarcasm and you can look at the person who's being uh, sarcastic or is telling a joke and you can say I'm the kind of person who takes things literally you know are you joking or are you serious so you just find a way of asking your friends and loved ones, you know, are you joking or are you serious? Now, if you've said it a number of different times, you might be able to leave out the part of, I'm the kind of person who takes things literally. So for instance, if it's your parent who's always sarcastic, you probably don't need to inform them every single time that you're the kind of person who takes things literally. Um, but you can just use the second part, which is just, you can just turn to them and say, are you joking or are you serious? Now, if this is someone who has a regular habit of being like that, you need to make sure that that person is on board with giving a serious answer. Because sometimes they don't. You know, so the people who like to joke and tease don't always like to answer that question. And, and they might say, well, I don't know, am I? You know, things like that, which you know, just increase the confusion and anger, you know, for the child on the autism spectrum. So you want to get the, if it's a person that the child interacts with regularly, you want to get them on board, that whenever the child says this, you will tell them the truth, you know, whether they're, it's a joke or if it's serious, and will help interpret for them what it is that's actually going on. Uh, because otherwise, then this isn't a helpful strategy to use. Now, if the child has informed, say, their classmates that they have autism or Asperger's, they might say something like, uh, I have Asperger's syndrome, and one thing that means about me is that I have a hard time telling when people are joking. So are you joking or are you serious right now? Uh, and so that can help them understand, because even if their classmates know that they have autism or Asperger's, they often don't really know what that means, or they just might know one quality of what that means, but they might not know this piece of it, that a child with autism or Asperger's, or maybe some other special need, uh, might take things literally and not know how to interpret a joke or how to interpret sarcasm, or a, you know, one of those comments like, oh, I could just strangle you right now. You know, it's like, what? Are you really making a threat or are you joking? You know, so you want to um, help the child learn to ask those questions. And again, it's more likely to be helpful if you help them rehearse it, 
um, you prompt them to use the skill in different situations rather than you rescuing them. So if you see them in a social situation, you know, say with someone in the family or with a friend, and this kind of situation comes up, instead of you as the adult stepping in and saying, um, I think that uh, Jane just took you literally, you know, could you tell them whether you mean it? You might instead coach the child by saying to them quietly or taking them aside and saying, you could ask if they mean that seriously or if they're joking. Or you could tell, or you could do the whole part. Remember your skill. You remember to say, I'm the kind of person that takes things literally. Are you joking or are you serious? Uh, so those are some ways to help the child gradually, over time, learn to work these out. Because it could be a very confusing world um, when you take seriously everything that people say. Because people say a lot of things that they don't mean. Uh, so this is a way to help a child with the perception that they're being teased or bullied if the intention of the other people is actually to be friendly and to joke and to have a good time with the child because this is a very confusing thing for kids on the autism spectrum or with other special needs that lead them to see the world in a very literal manner. They just have a lot of struggle with that. So my name is Barbara Lester and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I have almost 30 years of experience working with children and adolescents and if you like this kind of information please subscribe to my YouTube channel which is ASD Specialist and if you have other ideas for how to help children um, or teens with situations like this when there's a perception of being bullied, please leave a comment to help other families. And remember, I do have another video about what to do if a child is actually being teased or bullied rather than just thinking they're being teased or bullied. So thanks for stopping by.